Okay, I've decided to make a custom object tutorial. For this I've prepared a small level with this object which will crash the game if I go near to it. And this pipe which will lead to area 2 which I will import later too. Uh, for this you've got to open your level in Toad's tool first. Get the address for any of this. They are basically the same. Open the ROM in the hex editor. You will see a lot of these 2 2 comments. We are searching for the one which has the model ID for the thing I've placed here, which is this one. Um, I will use the custom importer from the level importer. That means I have to get all these values. The first one has to be th the second half of the comment, to point to the second half of the comment. That means it's 2208010104. Two uh, two two zero zero uh, to find the max ROM offset, we have to scroll a bit more up. You will see this part, a lot of 1.7 comments. 1.7 comment has this length. We are searching for 1.7, 0c and then the 0e part. Um, take the second part of it and add 2.0.0.0.0 to it and write down here. This is the max ROM offset. To find the exact ROM offset where we will write down our stuff, we need to go to the first part and scroll until we see one z zero 0101 zero one stuff, which is here. It's I didn't had to scroll a lot because the level I've imported is just two faces and one texture. You will probably have to scroll a lot more. Uh, I'm gonna write this down. Mm, now to get the RAM offset, you take the ROM offset, open Windows Calculator, and subtract the thing where you went to at first, which is two two nine zero 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 zero. This is the offset in Bank Zero E. But we have to add the bank offset, which is E0000000. This will be the RAM offset. Copy this, paste this here. Now I want my object to be solid, and I'm using behavior 1E04. That means I will have to find the 2A comment. With. Wrong. Um, 1E04. Now I'm at this behavior. You see the 2A comment. We have to override the second half of it. That means we add 4 to this number. And we are here. Um, now I want to import this object. I export it into my folder. I'm using Kinopio's UV fix because sometimes textures will screw up without it. And it has done good work for me. Oh, and other important part is if your model is supposed to be solid, you cannot center it in the importer because that will create wrong collision. It's a bug that Scalex will probably fix later. Now remove the old pointer because it's wrong. O it doesn't matter which on which you click because you will override all values anyways. Um, yeah, copy all this stuff in. Oh, no space because that will screw stuff up. Um, 
must have written something wrong. Yeah, one zero was missing, my bad. Okay, another thing before you can actually open your ROM and see your object is you have to change the command. I've had it to 2.2, two, two, which is for geo layouts, but I've only imported a display list, so I will have to change it to 2.1. Two, the difference is that in a geo layout you can put different limbs and shadows and scaling comments or offsets, whatever. In a display list you can't. So now if we open our ROM, we should see the UFO. Yeah, there it is, and it should be solid. No problem. Yeah, some detectors, but that's the model and not the method. Now to the second aerial. For that, we will have to prepare our ROM before. Um, you have to go into the script of the level again. Now we will search for the 1F comment, which is this. Uh, we need it to be... We need two of these because every one, every single of them creates an area. Now an area ends with a 2-0 comment, which is this one. I will place it here. This will create a different length, but we don't really care right now. I copy some of this. Um, every 2-4 comment, which is this length, stands for one object. Um, I've copied this many. And every 2-6 comment, which is this length, is one warp. For example, this is warp ID 0A, warps to level 09, which is Bobbomb's battlefield area 1 and warp ID A. Um, I'm copying all of this and paste it here. Now this is a pointer to the geo layout for the aerial and this is the aerial number. We want it to be 2. So I change it. Um, I put the pointer to six I will have to do some edits there. Uh, I've put some data in between all of this so we have to remove some stuff. Um, this is a geo layout for area 1 so I know it's at 1700 so I can just delete all of this and I will know it's at the right place. I will copy all of this and paste it over this. <laughs> yeah, now you have to find the one five yeah, uh, yeah, one five zero one comment. Uh, depending on your level, you might have a 1505 comment too. You just have to delete that one because otherwise that will create glitches. Um, this is our pointer. Uh, yeah, let me write that down quickly. Mm. That's it. Okay. Uh, for an area we need a collision pointer. Level collision is loaded by the 2E comment, which is right here. So the collision pointer is here. Mm -hmm. To get the data we do the same thing as last time. So I can just go here, scroll down a bit. 
Yeah, the UFO is a lot bigger than the level, so we have to scroll a lot more. And I will put it here. Again, the RAM offset is this. We can do this in Windows Calculator as well, but it's not quite hard. The max ROM offset remains the same because we load the same amount of data into it. So, load model. This is also just a flat surface. So. Again, we paste all of our data. Now, before we can actually enter our aerial, we have to set a start warp, which I will do quickly. I have set the warp pipe already, so... Oh wait, I didn't save. Import model, open ROM and holds tool. This takes years. going to put the warp somewhere into this and we should be able to enter it. <coughs> 